So now let's discuss about management. So for any question that is coming regarding the management, I want you to look at the severity, whether it is non-severe, severe, or if there is eclampsia as such. Please understand that the definitive treatment of preeclampsia or hypertension in pregnancy is termination of pregnancy. So the definitive cure is termination of pregnancy. What we have to understand is how to terminate, when to terminate and what to do before termination. If you look at it like this, it's going to be very easy. When to terminate, how to terminate and what you are going to do prior to termination. So when do we terminate? So if there is no severe symptoms, we can go up till 37 weeks. If there are severe symptoms, it is still 34 weeks. If there is eclampsia, it is immediate termination. So we discuss when to terminate. Next is how to terminate. So preeclampsia or hypertension as such is not an indication for cesarean section. So cesarean is actually reserved for only obstructive indications. The third thing is what to do before termination. So if there are no severe symptoms, we are going to take the pregnancy forward till 37 weeks. In the meanwhile, we have to monitor the patient as well as the baby. As for the mother, we would be sending investigation, checking her blood pressure. As for the baby, we have to do NST as well as biophysical profile twice weekly. NST and biophysical profile twice weekly. All right. Along with that, we have to give her antihypertensive so as to control her blood pressure. The drug of choice in antihypertensive is Lebetalol. So Lebetalol is the drug of choice in pregnancy. The other antihypertensive include alpha methyl dopa and nifedipin, which can be given orally. Now regarding the severe preeclampsia. In case of severe preeclampsia, we decide to terminate the pregnancy by 34 weeks. In the meantime, it is important that we control the hypertension using antihypertensive. So in severe, we usually give IV labetalol. IV labetalol, which is given initially 20. If it is not responding, we give 40. If it is not responding, again 40 IV. If not responding, we will give 80 IV. 20, 40, 40 and 80. All right. The other drugs include oral nifedipine. Please note it's not sublingual. It is oral nifedipine as well as IV hydralazine can be used. So we have admitted the patient. We have given her antihypertensive. Next is magnesium sulfate. Why do we give magnesium sulfate? So that the patient does not have a convulsion. To prevent complication related to hypertension, that is like intracranial hemorrhage, we are giving the patient antihypertensive. So, magnesium sulfate is given to prevent convulsion. Alright, next is monitoring. We have to vigorously monitor the mother as well as the baby. In non-severe, we told that the biophysical profile and NST is done twice weekly. Whereas in this, they are done daily. On a daily basis, we are going to do the fetal monitoring. So, let's see what are the indications for going for an immediate termination. If there is uncontrolled hypertension, if the hypertension is uncontrolled, if there is evidence of any end organ damage, the third is if there is any imminent symptoms or if there is eclampsia as such, either there is imminent symptoms of eclampsia or there is eclampsia as such or evidence of fetal distress or abruption. In all these scenarios, we are going to terminate the patient immediately. Along with that, remember that whenever there is HELP syndrome, that is the complication of preeclampsia when there is HELP syndrome. Even in that case, we are going to terminate the patient immediately. Alright, so first we discuss the various types of hypertension, then how to differentiate them as severe, non-severe and how to manage the scenarios. Once you diagnose it as severe, non-severe, how to manage it. So magnesium sulfate is by in itself a very important topic. I would be discussing that in the next session. So please subscribe so that you are notified when the next video comes. Until we meet next time. Bye-bye.